welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be discussing the greatest WWE Elite action figure of all time. If you guys did not know, actually, just the other day on my Instagram, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, go follow me on Instagram at My Damn Toys. Definitely go check us out over there. We do polls and all kinds of weird posts and customs and just things, extra content that I don't post on the channel, I post over there on Instagram. So definitely go follow me over there, guys. But I, I conducted a survey. I put it up on my story. I asked my audience, the people that follow me, I asked what the best WWE Elite of all time was. And I got a slew of responses. I don't know if I have the sheet still with all the... Actually, here it is. I actually... It's, it's, right, it's right in front of me. I actually got like... Uh, let me count. It's taking too long. I'd say 30... 45, 50 figures. I think there's like 50 figures that got nominated. However, there were some that got multiple votes, and I tallied those votes up. I put them into a 16-man bracket, and I broke it down, and I thought you guys would be interested in the results of this bracket, what the figures were, who won the thing, who's the best of all time, you know, in quotations, because obviously it's just the people that viewed my story, but I like to think that, you know, a lot of people's people, you know, people's people that have figure opinions or opinions about action figures or WWE figures, I I feel like they would follow the uh, follow the page, I think. However, let's break down our matchups, man. I, I tallied up the votes. I seeded them 1 through 16 and then bracketed it up. If you guys, I'm, I'm huge into sports, man. I love March Madness. I love college basketball. I love pro basketball. I love sports, man. I love football and basketball are my two main sports. That's the ones I've played my entire life growing up as a child. Absolutely love it. So this is fun for me, man. When I can mix sports and sports entertainment, and professional wrestling and action figures, put it all in to one John Brown freaking idiot and create a bracket, I'm going to do that. So that's what we did here today, guys. Let's go ahead and break down the bracket and get into these matchups because I think you guys are going to be pretty uh, psyched about it. Now, starting out first, I would love to do this with 64 figures like actual March Madness and redo this whole thing, and I probably will do that. However, this was still pretty freaking fun, man. I had a ton of fun, and I can't wait to share the results. So let's go ahead and get into the seating. Our first matchup, guys, CM Punk Elite Series 16 is the number one seed. Going up against the number 16 seed was Defining Moments Bret Hart. Great matchup right here for our first round. The next matchup on their side of the bracket, we had the number 9 seeded Walter going up with the 8 seeded Elite 84 Roman Reigns. It actually shocked me a lot that there, there's a lot of like figures on here that are kind of recent, so it's probably some recency bias, but figures are getting better, so I can give it a little pass. Next up, guys, number 5 seeded Elite 70 Chase Dolph Ziggler going up with the 12th seeded RVD from Elite Series 27. Really good matchup right there. I like this one a lot. Next up, the number 13 seeded Defining Moments HBK Shawn Michaels going up with the four seeded Eddie Guerrero figure. Our next matchup was number three seed Elite 45 Seth Rollins going against number 14 seed 30 Years Undertaker. Thought that was an interesting concept and take that that, that taker actually made it into the top, you know, 16. Obviously um, this is why I want to expand it to 64 just because we, we can get a lot of great matchups. We can get a lot of great figures. There's a ton of figures that did not make it into the bracket. You know, there's only 16, but 64 would give us a wide range of exclusives, really good figures, all those different things, you know, iconic figures for the WWE Elite line. So I think I am going to expand it, but just for the bracket, man, this this is, this gets me going. Next up, guys, number six seed Elite 86 Rollins went up with the number 11 seed SES Punk, man. Really low seed for the SES Punk, I thought, but you know, pe may people may have voted based on what I like. So maybe they voted for Rollins and Ziggler just because they thought that's what I wanted to hear. So I don't know. Next up, guys, number seven seed Elite One Jeff Hardy going up with number 10 seed Elite 12 Kane or the Hall of Champions Kane. Kind of the same figure anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then our last matchup at the bottom side of the bracket because the one seed and the two seed are on opposite sides, you know, from the top to the bottom was the number 15 seed Elite 69 Tommaso Ciampa. Really good upset alert right here, man. It's a dark horse for the tournament is the Ciampa figure. And the number two seed in this entire bracket was the Elite 82 Finn Balor. Now, that's where I think the, the bias came in, because he got a ton of votes, man. I, I don't know where that came from, but uh, it had a lot of votes. Like, a lot of people said Elite 82 Finn Balor. I don't know if that's, you know, like they, they're just thinking of really good figures from the past year, and they were like, oh yeah, that one. So that's why I want to expand the field again, but let's get into these matchups and share these results, guys. So in our first round, guys, Elite 16 CM Punk and Defining Moments Bret Hart went up, and Elite Elite 16 CM Punk actually smashed Defining Moments Bret Hart 68% to 32%. I'd say around average, uh, these polls got close to 5,000 votes. 
per one. So there was a lot of people voting on this thing. The next up, our next matchup was up. It was a very narrow victory for Walter, guys, but Walter does advance over the Elite 84 Roman Reigns. Next up, guys, the Elite 27 RVD edged out the Chase Ziggler by just 5%. Like, they, I know it's 10% difference here, but uh, away from 50, it was a very close race. I thought that Ziggler was going to get him, but uh, the cloth accessories and the attire and all that stuff, man, people love that Elite RVD. I feel like if we had more Elite RVDs, this would have been a little bit different, but since it's our only Elite RVD, I think that's probably why people went with RVD, but I, I can agree with it. You know, I don't have any any uh, you know hard feelings towards it. Next up was Legends Eddie and Defining Moments HBK and Eddie Guerrero in 60 to 40. Really good matchup right there in the first round to see two epic figures and two legends like that go head to head. Next up, guys, was Elite 45 Rollins and 30 Years Taker, and Elite 45 Rollins actually rocked Taker's face, and I can agree with that. I really love the Elite 45 Rollins, so, uh, and I don't, I don't even remember, I don't think I voted in this at all, trying to, you know, not, you know, interfere or anything like that, so, I feel like, I, I can't even remember, I probably, I, I, who cares. Next up, Elite 86 Rollins does get a pretty good amount of votes, but the SES Punk does edge him out, guys, 55% to 45%, I, again, I think, you know, a lot of people were probably voting for Rollins, you know, and that's pretty impressive that this Punk could win, when, you know, you're comparing it to Rollins, when it's such a, it's like a 10, like, this SES Punk is literally 10 years older than the Seth Rollins. Next up was Elite 1 Jeff and Elite 12 Kane. Very good matchup right here, man. This is an excellent matchup, but Elite 1 Jeff does get the crushing victory of 65% to 35%. And then narrowly, a huge upset here. Elite 82 Finn Balor loses 48% to 52% to the Elite 69 Ciampa. And if you guys want the exact numbers on this, this is how close it was. Literally like less than 200 votes apart was the Elite 69 Ciampa and the Elite 82 Balor. Really good battle right there, but Ciampa does edge out Finn Balor in this juncture. Now, we're moving on to round two of our tournament bracket, and this is where it gets insanity. So, in round two, guys, our matchups, we had CM Punk Elite 16 going up with the ringside exclusive Walter. We had the Elite 27 RVD going up with the Legends Eddie Guerrero figure. We had the Elite 45 Rollins going up with the SES Punk, so SES Punk had to battle two Rollins figures back to back. We had Elite 1 Hardy going up with Elite 69 Ciampa as our final matchup in this bracket. Great matchups right here for round two. I thought that, you know, at this juncture in the bracket, we had a couple upsets here and there. I really wanted Elite 82 Balor to beat Ciampa. Didn't happen, Brad, but let's break down who won these matchups for round two. So in our Elite 16 Punk versus Walter matchup, man, Punk absolutely crushed Walter. 75% to 25%. It was like three-fourths of the vote, man. Elite 16 Punk was on a tear as the number one seed. It was going to be very hard to take down, and Walter proved that here. Walter's a good figure, but no match for Elite 16 Punk right here. Next up, guys, this is a great matchup. Two legendary figures. We had Legends Eddie Guerrero versus Elite 27 RVD. And since we don't have that many Eddie Guerreros, man, this better Eddie Guerrero Elite does beat out RVD. I think, again, if both of them had multiple figures, you know, they both don't have that many. So when you get a really good figure of, you know, Eddie Guerrero with the cloth accessories and around that time and everything, uh, Ed Eddie Guerrero does beat him out 59% to 41%. But that was a good little battle right there. Coming up next, guys, Elite 45 Rollins going up with SES Punk. He doesn't have enough, man. Elite 45 Rollins beats out SES Punk. Really good battle right here, 55% to 45%. SES Punk is eliminated in an upset, but Elite 45 Rollins had a ton of support in this tournament. And the last matchup of round two, guys, Elite 1 Hardy beats out Elite 69 Chomp. This one was kind of closer than I thought it would be, but Elite 1 Hardy wins 58% to 42% over the Dark Horse and Elite Series 69 Chomp. Really good figure right there, man. But Hardy does take care of business, and he is advancing. All right, guys. After this, it was on to the semifinal round. We had, you know, this is, this is the best WWE Elite of all time tournament semifinals. Breaking it down, man. The final four of this thing was Elite 16 Punk, Legends Eddie Guerrero, Elite 45 Rollins, and Elite 1 Hardy. This ish was close AF, man. It was a great battle. Let's break down the first matchup. Elite 16 Punk versus Legends Eddie Guerrero. Elite 16 Punk smashed him in the titties again, man. 63% to 37%, man. You know, the cloth goods were great, but I was actually shocked by this. I thought that it would be closer to breaking even just because the Eddie is so good. Like, it's a really good figure, a really great time. These are two figures that embody a great time in wrestling and a great memory and moment and the iconicness and everything, but the Eddie Guerrero has a better head sculpt and uh, it, it in the legendary status that is Eddie Guerrero, and he still got smacked. So, that's why Elise 16 Punk was the number one seed, man. He was just 
just running rampant. And then in our other matchup, we had Elite 45 Rollins and Elite 1 Hardy. Elite 1 Hardy beat Rollins 51% to 49%. So close. I want to say at one point in this vote, the votes were like 60 votes apart or 50 votes apart. And for some reason, my Instagram wouldn't let me go back and see the details of this of this matchup right here. So I couldn't see the exact number. But before it went away, I do remember checking it. And it was literally like 50 or 60 votes apart. And it was a great battle. But at the end of the day, man, Elite One Hardy wins it over Elite 45 Rollins. Ton of support for the all-white Rollins. But it wasn't enough, man. And our final matchup was C. CM Punk taking on Jeff Hardy and since I'm a huge sports fan like I said before man for this finals for the CM Punk versus Jeff Hardy I broke it down man I put up the finals since I'm a big hoops fan for the finals we're going to do it best of seven style like the NBA finals so I will select seven categories and let you guys vote on which figure is better in that category whoever wins four out of the seven categories will be declared the best WWE elite of all time I think this would be really fun to do with 64 the best of the best elites ever made and I've covered that already multiple times in this video but let's break down these seven different categories so for my first category I put overall which would you rather have your entire collection is gone you have to choose between these two figures to restart your collection which one would you pick for the second one I did posability which figure is more fun to pose around this relates to which figure feels better in the hand when posing them neither has ball joints so honestly this is a pretty good matchup number three legacy which figure is more iconic to you elite 16 punk is an embodiment of punk's notorious WWE WWE title run. Such a great time for a lot of wrestling fans. Elite One Jeff is the embodiment of rare WWE Elite figures in general, as it was pulled from shelves and never got a full run. Number four, likeness. Which figure more closely resembles the character of wrestler at that time? How good is the head sculpt? Are the parts accurate? Both are older, so they're not perfect, but for their time, I love both. Number five, packaging. Which packaging do you like more for either figure? Both are nostalgic for a lot of people for a lot of reasons, but which do you like more? How good is the figure mock? Does a mock Elite One Jeff even exist anymore? Number six, attire. Which figure has the better gear? Punk's is iconic. Hardy's is very nice indeed with the purple and green sleeves. Which is better? And then last but not least, guys, I went with accessories. Which figure has better accessories? They both come with a cloth shirt. Jeff was supposedly going to come with a cloth towel as well, but I only know the mock image. So let's break down these matchups real quick, man. Overall, CM Punk won the first category 60% to 40%, so that is 1-0 for CM Punk. In number two, posability, Elite 16 Punk 56% to 44% for Elite 1 Hardy. That one kind of shocked me. I feel like Hardy is slightly better to pose around, but the people voted, man. What do you want? It's not my, it's not, I, I can't play a role in this. Number three, Legacy Punk beat out Hardy 55% to 45%, so 3-0, really big lead right now for CM Punk. If he wins one more category, it is over, but Elite, this kind of shocked me for Iconic, or for Legacy, I should say, because Elite 1 Jeff, I feel like, has a is like a bigger Legacy type deal, you know, because he's like, you know, he, he like literally is so rare, like it's extremely rare to have his figure, so I, I don't know, but that just, the, the people spoke, man. Number four, Likeness, CM Punk wins again, 66% to 34% and that pretty much wraps up the tournament because CM Punk 4-0 swept him before we even got, you know, Jeff on the board here. But Jeff did end up winning the packaging, which would be 59% to 41% packaging. You know, Jeff Hardy gets it. So right now the series, it's over. Series is over. CM Punk won, but Hardy did get a victory in there. A tire. CM Punk wins again 5-1, to 58% to 42%. And then accessories. Hardy almost, you know, got in there for a second victory. But at the end of the day, Punk wins 51% to 49% over accessories. And the all-time best figure ever is Elite 16 CM Punk. And I honestly thought that this would probably happen. A lot of people love that figure for the iconicness, the attire, just the embodiment of it. Literally, I mean, one thing that you could probably do, like if he ever came back to the company, I would love to see that figure re-released with a better head sculpt, interchangeable hands, WWE Championship. You could do some epic stuff, man. Double jointed, like, good God, can you imagine them re-releasing that figure but elite 16 cm punk as it stands right now is apparently the best wwe elite of all time do you agree with it brad let me know down in the comment section below i don't even know how long we went i feel like i sat here for a minute so i guess we'll just have to find out about that but let me know down below guys if elite 16 cm punk is indeed the greatest figure of all time or the best wwe elite of all time and let me know what your favorite is down below do you agree with the results what do you guys think do you think i should expand the field to 64 and run it back will punk repeat i guess we can find out guys 
But that pretty much does it for today's video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I had a ton of fun breaking down the polls, doing all the stuff. Again, it's all sports related for me, so I love stuff like this, man. That's what I live for. But before we get out of here, guys, let's get into a random shout out before I have to cut my legs off and eat them like scrambled eggs. And this shout out is going to go to Fusion Fire Wrestling, who says MDT RVD with double jointed arms in the future with the freaking crying face of the just, you know, like wailing emoji with the with the praying hands. And he is correct, man. When I see a double jointed RVD with the accessories and the true effects and the RVD and the hey, hey, it hurts me, I will be losing my freaking mind, man. That's going to be an epic day of reveals, and it'll be here before we know it, man. We're going to blink. And, I mean, we may get it at San Diego Comic-Con. Like, we may actually get to see that, but... When we actually see the figure revealed to us, which would probably be... We're waiting on Elite 87. It should be hitting any time now. And then we have, what, Elite 88, 89, 99. We might get it by Christmas. We might see it, like, prototype image of the RVD by Christmas. But I would guess later than that. I'd guess, like, maybe February is when we would see that figure. But who knows, man. But don't cross the line like, uh... I don't know. Like that mosquito from a few videos ago. F him. You cross